Good afternoon. My name is Chelsea Sims, Program Assistant for the Center for Gender Equity, and I'd like to welcome you to the Women's Health Today, a monthly bi uh, monthly series of talks on contemporary topics in women's health. I'm pleased to see those of you in the live audience and to specifically welcome those of you watching online by webcast or on TV at UCTV. Women's Health Today is presented by the UCSF Center for Gender Equity and the UCSF National Center of Excellence in Women's Health. Today's topic is the heart healthy properties of chocolate with Dr. Mary B. Engler. Dr. Engler is a professor and director of the Cardiovascular and Genomics Graduate Programs in the Department of Physiological Nursing at the University of California, San Francisco. Dr. Engler received her PhD degree in physiology with a cardiovascular focus from Georgetown University in Washington, DC, and completed her doctoral research training at the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland. She also holds a BS and MS degrees in biology from American University in Washington, DC. Her clinical experience spans over 13 years in critical care and cardiovascular surgery at the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland. Her academic career at UCSF began in 1988. It is now my pleasure to welcome Dr. Mary Engler. Well, thank you, Chelsea, and I'd like to thank the Center for your kind invitation to come today, and hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm really delighted to be here to speak about everyone's favorite, chocolate. And amazingly, we are finding heart healthy benefits uh, with chocolate due to the antioxidant flavonoids it contains. And nutrition and heart disease have been my major area of, of research for most of my academic career. Specifically, I've worked with the vascular effects of the omega-3 fatty acids and more recently with uh, the flavonoids and, and chocolate. I can tell you that chocolate is definitely uh, very popular as opposed to the fish oil that I'd worked with for so many years. <laughs> well, now I just want to get to know you all a little bit better and I thought I'd take an informal poll. And I'd like to find out what your chocolate preference is. So, I'm going to just go through the three different kinds and see if I can get a show of hands, which is your, your uh, preference. So don't be shy now. Okay. So let's see. How many prefer dark chocolate as your favorite chocolate? How many for milk chocolate? I see two doing both dark and milk. <laughs> How about white chocolate? <laughs> okay. Well, let's see. It looks like the winner and favorite is most likely the milk chocolate and dark chocolate is quickly not too far behind so it looks like I have my work cut out for me as far as uh, converting you over to the the dark chocolate the heart healthy preference so this is our uh, mission today um, I want to first give you some background and history on chocolate and then uh, we'll focus on the heart and antioxidants especially with the chocolate flavanols being center stage. And then lastly, we'll look at the science surrounding chocolate and its heart healthy benefits. So are you ready? Okay. Well, chocolate is really, uh, really started out as a, as a beverage between 250 AD and uh, 1400. The Mayan and Aztec civilizations uh, drank we actually refer to the chocolate drink as cacao, or I'm going to use the term cocoa because that's a little bit more familiar uh, to everyone. And it's really derived from the, the fruit seeds of the pods of the cocoa tree. So what they would do, they would grind up the cocoa beans into this, this paste and uh, mix it with a little bit of water and, and spices and then usually drink it warm so it was really the original uh, hot chocolate hot chocolate really started to, to be and it was really a drink of, of the elite such as here with Emperor Montezuma and the cocoa beans were very valuable uh, as currency so 
well, given Thanksgiving's coming next week, uh, they would trade four beans for one turkey or one pumpkin, for example. And this chocolate drink was also used as in many of the rituals uh, to their Aztec god. In fact, the, their cacao god, it was believed that he rained down this heavenly chocolate drink to everyone. And then in um, later in the 1500s, a Spanish conquistador, Hernan Cortes, defeated Montezuma and the cocoa beans and this precious drink then eventually made its way to Spain and, and Europe. And as Hernan Cortez says, this divine drink which builds up resistance and fights fatigue, a cup of this precious drink permits a man to walk a whole day without food. That's pretty remarkable. <laughs> and it was also, uh, the, the drink was also considered good for, uh, for, for your health and it would cure uh, fevers and actually cool the body in, in hot weather and alleviate stomach pains. So uh, a lot of medicinal effects as well. And then soon uh, the French aristocracy then drank the, the chocolate beverage as a status symbol, especially at the time of Louis the Fourteenth in Versailles, the court of Versailles. But interestingly, the Europeans didn't like the hot cocoa beverage as as it being very bitter, bitter. So they like to have the sugar. They like it, like to have it sweet. So they mixed in the sugar and they mixed in New World spices such as vanilla and and um, cinnamon. And then even Thomas Jefferson in the 1700s recognized the superiority of chocolate, both for health and nourishment, and he felt it would give eventually preference over coffee and tea in the America, which it had done in, in Spain. But it actually took some time before chocolate hit the Americas as the tariffs for sugar and, and cocoa were quite high. But once Milton Hershey in Pennsylvania and Domingo Giardelli in San Francisco opened up their respective chocolate factories, the Hershey Chocolate Bar and the Giardelli Almond Bar quickly um, made its way through, through America. And the rest is history. We love Lucy and Lucy loved chocolate. <laughs> So now let's look at the processing of the cocoa bean to the actual manufacture of, of chocolate. So the, the chocolate flavonoids are really derived from the cocoa bean or cacao bean, as you would say. And it's really found in the fruit pod of, of the cacao tree. And theobromo cacao actually means food of the gods. So that tells you something right there, that we're off to a good start. <laughs> and since chocolate is um, plant-derived, as are most fruits and vegetables, uh, which are high in antioxidant flavanols, um, that's why you always hear that the fruits and vegetables are, are good for your heart, because of that high percentage of the flavonoids that have these antioxidant properties. And we'll get into that a little bit more.